This year, I'm teaching on the subject of witness. And so when you talk about being a witness of God's generosity, it is whatever it is that you present, that's your witness. When people call your name, what do people think about you? When people see you, what do they think about you? And I'm not talking about just thinking negative stuff about you. No, no, no. I'm talking about what are people saying concerning you, concerning your life in particular? That's your witness. God forbid that you're ever taken to court, but if you're in court and, and, and they call somebody up to the stand to witness on your behalf, what will they say about you? And so if, if, if I'm supposed to know God, have a good relationship with him, and I'm always complaining, then that's my witness. This guy, that guy over there, Shane Wall, goes to church, pastors of church. Every time I talk to him, all he does is complain. Oh, this is happening. Oh, that's happening. I don't know what is going to happen next. When it rains, it pours. That's my witness. That's what people think about me. Why? Because that's how I am. That's what I presented. Amen. Wouldn't it be awesome to be a witness of God's generosity? Yes. All right. So, okay, I got two more. Good. I keep preaching. Matthew 7, verses 1 through 12. Do not judge. Now, I'm going to tell you, follow me. Because... I'm not talking about prosperity in terms of you getting a whole bunch of money. And so you're not going to see a bunch of scriptures about how to get more money, how to get a better job, this, that, and the other. You know, last week, the Lord showed me that there were some people getting new positions, new jobs, you know, and I spoke it out here. And so, two, I've got two texts of people who, who God is just blessed with new jobs. And I praise and thank God for that. But there is something deeper and something more. Because there are people, now, as you know, I used to work at a credit union. I was a teller and so many different things there. And I saw people who made six figures over $100,000 needing to come in and get a loan. And I don't mean a $20,000 loan. I'm talking about $700. Yes. Yeah. It's not how much you make. It's what you do with what you have. People are so stingy today. They're just so stingy. Just, no, people aren't stingy. People don't manage their money well and they don't have enough to give. Right. I can't be generous because I don't even have enough to take care of myself. That's not how we're supposed to live. Somebody needs your help and you can't help yourself. God is a very generous God. Yes. And we're supposed to be like him. All right. So let's, let's follow this. Let's follow this. Do not judge and criticize and condemn others. This is what Jesus taught. Grace is that I done lost the five people I had. Do not judge and criticize and condemn others so that you may not be judged and criticized and condemned yourselves. For just as you judge and criticize and condemn others, this is Jesus. So I said, I thought Jesus was just so sweet and just so nice. He is. You will be judged and criticized and condemned. And in accordance with the measure you use to deal out to others, it will be dealt out again yeah. to you. Yeah. Mm. Uh huh. Yeah. You've been judging, folk, eh? Uh huh. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So. Here in the word of the Lord, 
God doesn't want us to be judged and condemned because he'd rather be merciful and bless us lavishly. Thank you, Lord. Yes, Lord. God does not want us to be condemned. Why do you think he told us, listen, don't judge others, don't condemn others? Why? Because I don't want you to be condemned. I don't want you to be judged. That is why. It's just wrong. Yes, it's wrong to do it. It's wrong for you to do it and it's wrong for others to do it to you. That's why I said don't do it at all. Because I would just rather be merciful to you and just bless you lavishly. I don't remember the last time I used that word, but when I was studying this, this is exactly what the Holy Spirit said. Use that word because that's how God wants to bless. We always look at God as just blessing us incrementally. I just want to give you just enough to just keep serving me. Keep coming to me, won't most up. Just give you just enough, Lord. That's not God. You know what that is? We just believe like that. We believe I can only get this much from God. Then I can only get this much more. Then after I use that up, then I go back and beg and give. That's not God. What is that all about? Okay, come on. Didn't he just create this whole world? Go out and look at the grass and the trees and stuff. Was God skimping on us at all? So, so the rivers and the seas are only about five feet wow. deep. That's about it. Come on. Amen. No such thing as green grass. All the grass is just faded orange and brown. God is lavish. Yes. Nice, nice. All right. God governs his own actions. By the laws he established. God doesn't tell us to do something that he's not going to do. Amen. As we obey his laws, he is bound to obey his laws according to the actions we've taken. If you don't condemn others and you don't judge others, I'm not going to condemn you. I'm not going to judge you. I'm bound by my own laws. That is why God is so righteous. That is why God is so holy. Because even the laws that he speaks into existence, into a structure that he establishes, he has to obey his own laws. That's why he's so holy. Wow. What if we did everything we said we were going to do? God doesn't say things like, okay, yeah, I'll be there around seven. <laughs> be there around seven. No, no, no. I will be there at seven. Yeah, I think I'm going to get up around. God doesn't do around. We have to get that out of our vocabulary. <sighs> My nephew started a new job somewhere. And I was telling him what to do. And I said, please, please, nephew, never be on time, ever. Never be on time at your job. Always be early. Yes. He said, ooh, I was wondering, what were you about to say? I said, yes, never, ever, ever, ever be on time. I make that a habit in my life. I don't like being on time for anything. I like being there early. If it starts at 11, why am I going to get there at 11? Let 11 hit me while I'm there. <laughs> Verse 3. Why do you stare from without at the very small particle that is in your brother's eye, but you do not become aware and consider the beam of timber that is in your own eye? Mm-hmm. Yeah, I see. I see what you're doing. I see that little thing, right? You're trying to hide it. I see that little thing. And you got this big old log coming out of your eye. You should say to me, I'm surprised you can see it with that big old thing in your eye. <laughs> trying to judge folk. Yeah. Picking out. And you know, ooh, Holy Spirit just spoke to me. When you see people, they always talk about people. Always got something negative to say about somebody. You know what it is? They trying to hide their log. Yeah. 
They want every, they point at all the little splinters, all the little splinters at somebody else because they tried this. You don't see this log. I know you don't. Trying to hide it. I know you can't see more. Come on, come on. Or how can you say to your brother, let me, my goodness gracious, get the tiny particle out of your eye when there's a beam of timber in your own eye? What is the big deal about the eyes all of a sudden? What's the big deal? I mean, we were talking about judging folk and all this, that, and the other. And then all of a sudden, yes. Jesus starts talking about eyes. <laughs> don't judge others. Don't condemn others. Now, some people got a little particle in it. Jesus, stay on the subject. I mean, you, you were doing good. Now, he started talking about eyes. No, he's still doing good because we judge by what we see. Amen. We judge by what we see. Come on. We have to do better. Mm. Did you see? Did you see so and so out with so and so? <laughs> you know what's going on, don't you? Wow. <laughs> you should say to them, no, I don't know what's going on, and neither do you. I guarantee they'll never gossip to you again. Amen. No, I don't know what's going on. You don't know what's going on. Amen. I mean, no, no, no. I'm not saying that. No, you already did. I'm just saying, I don't know why they would be hanging out there. Maybe they're trying to help them. All right. mm. But you know, however your heart is, that's how you're going to see other people. If you're sneaky, you're going to see everybody else is being sneaky. Oh, we must have some sneaky people here. <laughs> it got quiet. <laughs> Come on online. At least y'all say amen to me here. <laughs> wow. Let me, let me move. Somebody say, I don't want to be this kind of generous. Yes. <laughs> Gracious thing. Oh, here, here we go. You hypocrite. First, first get the beam of timber out of your own eye. Yes. And then you will see clearly to take the tiny particle out of your brother's eye. So we, we need to judge and condemn ourselves. Yes. Which removes the beam, removes the big old log. And we have the power to do so. Yes. Look at yourself. Let's judge ourselves. Let's condemn ourselves for what we know we're doing wrong. Because evidently we can. Because he said, first get the beam out of your own eye. In other words, whatever is wrong with us. When we judge ourselves and we find ourselves needing to get rid of something out of our lives. We have the power to do that. Get the beam out. Get the log out. Judging and correcting ourselves should always be more intense than offering the help we see others need. We should be so intense. And see, this is what prayer is about. We think prayer is, Father, give me this. Lord, give me that. God, give me that. In Jesus' name, amen. Prayer should be, Father, show me myself. Amen. Who am I? Who am I? What do you expect of me? Like we talked last week. What am I not doing that I should be doing? And what am I doing that you don't want me to do? Lord, shine your x-ray on me whatever in me is not like you Lord what was that song we used to sing growing up if you find any 
thing that shouldn't be. Take it out and strengthen me. I want to be right. I want to be saved. I want to be whole. Take it out. How did that start? Amen. How did that start? How that song starts? How does it start? Um, I don't know. But that's, that's the important part right there. Amen. Now, at verse 6, do not give that which is holy, the sacred thing, to the dogs. And do not throw your pearls before hogs, lest they trample under them with their feet and turn and tear you in pieces. You didn't know hogs were violent, did you? <laughs> give not that which is holy, the blessing of the gospel to the dogs. Dogs metaphorically means, but always in a reproachful sense. Always, always, always. A man of impure mind, an impudent man, in other words, not showing due respect for another person. So Jesus is teaching us here, don't give the blessing of the gospel to somebody who doesn't have respect for you. Okay? Amen. Because they're not going to listen anyway. They're just not. What does this have to do with generosity? You will see. You will see. Don't do that. Because they don't care. They don't care to receive. Presented. Yes, Jesus presented the gospel of the kingdom of God to everyone. But what we don't do is go back and forth in argument. That's not what we do. We don't go back and forth in argument. Amen. Amen. Again, I want to talk about this part. Pearls before hogs. Don't put your pearls before hogs. In other words, to thrust the most sacred and precious teachings of the gospel upon the most wicked and abandoned men, incompetent as they are, through their hostility to the gospel to receive them and thus profane them. They speak negatively about what is precious to those who believe in Christ. Amen. Wow. Yes. Or else they're going to trample them under their feet like this. This isn't worth anything. Lord, help us. But we still minister in love. In love. People need Jesus. And they'll never, some people say, what is Jesus like? That's why we're witnesses. That's exactly why we're witnesses. So they can see Jesus through us. Jesus told the disciples this, and I'm about to go. I'm about to go to my father. Y'all be witnesses. Okay, y'all be witnesses. I'm gone. Y'all going to be here. Be witnesses of me. All right? And that's what we're supposed to continue to do. Be witnesses for Jesus. How can we witness when we're complaining, when we're judging, when we're doing all that? Come on. Come on. Come on. Now, Jesus goes to this. Keep on asking and it will be given you. Keep on seeking and you will find. Keep on knocking reverently and the door will be open to you. Keep on. The original Greek, I know in the King James Version said, ask and shall be given. Seek, you shall find. Knock, it shall be open. But in the original Greek and Chaldee and Aramaic of this verse, it literally means to keep on asking. No, oh, this is going to be good. Yes. This is going to be good. Sometimes I ask God for it. I didn't, I didn't get it. You ask again. No, if I ask again, I mean, I don't, I don't have faith. No, no. Well, you didn't get it. Didn't Jesus say we need to become like a little children? Wow, wow, wow. Yeah. Yeah. wow. The little children say, can I have it? Can I have it? <laughs> Ma. Ma, 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 ma. Keep on asking. 
asking. You know what we do? We completely forget that God is Father. We just look at him as just this great big old giant that's nothing but just light in the shape of a human being and sits up on this big old throne. He is Father. That's how Jesus taught us to look at him. Our Father. He's a parent. And we need to remember that every time we talk to him, this is my real daddy. Who knew me before my daddy knew me. My daddy is the one who gave my daddy me. He is our real daddy. All right. For everyone who keeps on asking, receives. Oh, that's the problem. I didn't keep it. That's why I keep on asking. Oh, hallelujah to God. And he who keeps on seeking finds. And to him who keeps on knocking, the door will be opened. Amen. Got to keep on asking. Got to keep on asking. Y'all know, October 2017, I stood right up here and I, I sold in that offering that night $200 because I was believing that we were going to build a house. And we got turned down more times than my collar. <laughs> turned down, turned down, turned down, two and a half years. Then three days before going to the closing table, COVID-19 hits and the company says, oh no, we're not going to fulfill no, uh, no loans like this anymore. And so then another company comes and then boom. We're there. So I had to keep on asking. I had to keep on asking. I didn't stop asking. Not one time did I say to Jasmine, you know, bump this. I'm tired. Not one time. I just kept on asking. Yes. Kept on seeking for another company that would give us a loan. Kept on knocking on doors until one of them said, come on in. Keep on. I saw this cartoon, I think it was on Instagram, where this, these, um, Two guys were just digging, digging, digging for gold, digging for gold, digging for gold. And this one guy got tired. And the next frame, he sold his um, area to this other guy for just a little bit of money. And it showed that he was that close to the gold and stopped digging. That close. How close were we? If I would have stopped after... We're already approved right at almost walking to the closing table. And they said, no, we're not going to fulfill any loans. There were people who uh, were supposed to have closings that day. That day. And they said, no, we're not going to. There are people who actually closed on the loan. And they said, but we're not going to give you the money. If I would have said, you know what? Bump it. I'm tired of this. We wouldn't be building right now. Keep on asking. Keep on asking. I'm telling you, keep on asking. Why do we have to keep on asking? Why do we have to keep on seeking? Why do we have to keep on knocking? Now, my Shane Wall answer is, what else you got to do? You don't have nothing else to do but to keep on asking. Can you provide it yourself? No. What else you got to do? Okay. Keep on seeking. Why? Why do we have to keep on knocking? Well, let's look at this. Are y'all ready to look at this? I'm ready to look at this too. God isn't trying to frustrate us. Mm. He's answering us in stages at every opportunity. Don't worry, I'm going to tell you what that means. 
Why do I have to keep on asking God? Why two over two and a half years? Why? No, no, no. I'm answering you in stages. Amen. Every time you come to me and ask, I answer. Somebody, somebody right now should ask me, what is the answer? What is the answer? Oh, good. Thank you for asking that. I'm glad you asked that. I'm so glad you asked that. What is the answer? The answer, remember this, God answers prayer. I say, yeah, I know. Sometimes he says yes. Sometimes he says no. Sometimes he says wait. I'm not talking about that. Every time we pray, y'all, please get this because I didn't know this before this week when I was studying for this message. God answers every single one of our prayers, but we think the answer is always the fulfillment, the miracle, the blessing. No, 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 no. God always gives us an answer. Father, we want to build this house. Will you give it to us? Yes. But first, you need to understand and learn the way it's going to go. So I'm not going to let you get the first one, but you're going, to, you're going to understand more about mortgages than you have ever understood in your life. Amen. What was that? An answer yes. to my prayer. Yes, so then we got approved. First thing out the, we got approved. The only reason why we weren't able to build, they didn't approve the builder himself. He was not approved. So, I learned something. That was God's answer. You're going to have to get a better builder. Amen. Can we build a house, Lord? Will you bless us? Yes. But my answer here, you got to get a better builder. Right. You have to get a reputable builder. Wow. Yes, he's licensed, but they didn't approve him. Got to get... That was his answer to prayer. Mm -hmm. how, many how many times have I prayed, y'all? And when I didn't get what I wanted... I thought, well, God ain't answered my prayer. Yes, he did. Yes. <laughs> he said, okay, good. Yes, I want to do that for you. Now, at this stage, this is what you need to know. Go back to him. Father, will you do it? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Now, at this stage, he answers us all the time. But it's in stages. Yes. Why don't we get it? Why didn't Shane Wall get it? Because I wasn't thinking about no stage. I want the house. Give me the money so I can, we can build a house. That was the only thing on my mind, getting the money to build a house. I didn't know anything about stages, anything like that. See, you know, people say you learn from your mistakes. Well, actually, you haven't learned anything until you know how to correct your mistake. So I always say you learn from your corrections. Now, y'all don't have to go through what I went through because now you know. When I go to God and pray for this, his answer back, I need to be open to everything he has to say. Because God is a pa parent. We teach our children in stages. Mm, 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 mm. Oh, what a man. Or what man is there of you if his son asks him for a loaf of bread, will he hand him a stone? Or if he asks for a fish, will he hand him a serpent? All right, so if you then, evil as you are, who Jesus called the people evil. Why did Jesus call them evil? Because they were. If you then, evil as you are, know how to give good and advantageous gifts to your children, how much more will your Father who is in heaven, perfect as he is, give good and advantageous things to those who keep on asking him? Y'all evil. You know Daddy, can I have some bread? God didn't get a rock. <laughs> Ask me for bread. Daddy, can I have some fish? Let me go out and find you a snake and give it to you. 
If evil men, women, give good things to their children, how much more will your father give to those who constantly, constantly, constantly ask good? He'll give you good. You give good things to your kids, advantageous. God will give good things to you. What does good mean? Useful, salutary, a gift which is truly a gift. What do you mean a gift which is truly a gift? And some people make you work for stuff. I'll give you this if you do that. Well, then it's no longer a gift. This is my pay. This is my earnings, my keep, my wage. No, no, no. God said, no, it's truly a gift. It's truly a gift. And I'm going to tell y'all something because somebody evidently needs to hear this because the Holy Spirit just told me to share this. The Holy Spirit through this whole process kept saying to me, easy money, easy money. Yeah, Jasmine knows it. Easy, kept speaking, easy money. And I was like, well, Father, it is not easy. I really don't understand it. Until this last company, this last company, I almost felt like I stole the money from them. I'm very serious. It was so easy. Oh, yeah, all you have to do is this, that, and other. So I do this, that, and other. I'm like, okay, what next? Because I've been through this enough time. Oh, yeah, now we're going to closing. Okay, closing again. Close, and then I had to call them this week and say, do y'all want the money? Because I haven't had a payment book. I don't know if they do those anymore or whatever. I said, nobody told me how to pay y'all. It's just easy. When do y'all want your money? I don't have to start making monthly payments. Oh, don't worry. We'll let you know. Easy money. Goodness gracious of life. I said that to say a gift, which is truly a gift. God wants to give us something that we don't have to work so hard for. Please know that. I have to work so hard just for the little scraps I do get. It's not God's way. You know, you know why people believe that? Because they look at themselves. If I don't do for me, who's going to do for me? That is why we look and get so little. Because this is what I can produce. This is what I have produced. Hmm. God's like, take it easy. Chill. Let me do it. Cast your cares on me. I care for you. Let me take care of you. God is something that I'm the daddy. Let me take care of you. Don't try to work things out. That's why you're frustrated. You're trying to work things out on your own. Salutary, especially with reference to something unwelcome or unpleasant, producing good effects, beneficial. This is what God wants to give us. This is what God has for us. Please know this. If you then, evil as you are, again, now, uh, know how to give good gifts. I want to say this. On earth, please know this. On earth, God works a bit differently than he can in heaven. Of course, God operates everything in heaven. All he, he governs all the activities in heaven. But he works a bit differently than he can in heaven on earth because of how elements relate to each other here on earth in time. Okay? On the earth, because some blessings take time to work out in stages. Now in heaven, everything is just boom, boom, boom. Because that's just eternity. But here on earth, there are systems, things work out in time. You can't apply for a, 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 a construction loan and then the next day they just give you a check. No, no, no. There, 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 there are stages. On the earth, there are stages. And we have to understand that. In dealing with God, we have to understand there are stages. So it works a bit differently. But we are still to pray what? Thy kingdom come. 
But let's, let's start from the beginning. Our Father which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done. Where? On earth, On earth as it is in heaven. We have to pray that. Now, the way that you govern things in heaven, I, I, I want you to govern my life here on earth. Just like that. Okay, but understand, it's going to be in stages. God always answers us. And now I think we got hallelujah to God. Ooh, thank you for your touch. Mm -mm -mm. I believe now we're going to love prayer more than we ever did. I believe now, because you know that's one of my ultimate goals, is to get people to be closer to God, to talk to him. In conversational format. Because prayer is not a speech. Prayer is a conversation. It's a conversation. All throughout the Bible, prayer has always been a conversation. Yes. We look at prayer and say, da -da 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 -da, amen. And go, no, he wants to talk. <laughs> wants to talk. And I believe we're going to have so great faith in God. That we're going to go in prayer saying, I wonder which stage am I at in this blessing. When I go and I pray, what answer I get back from God reveals to me what stage I'm on. Where am I? And so you go, okay, cool. I like prayer now. That's why the Bible says, and all that getting, get understanding. Get understanding. Get understanding. Each time we pray, a certain stage of the final product is completed. Have you ever been a part of an assembly line? Cars aren't made all at once. There is an assembly line. I don't know the things, but I'm sure, you know, they do the body, and then they do this, and then that, and then they put the tires on, and it's an assembly. Which stage are you at right now. Your car is almost done. For some of you, if it's a husband, if it's a wife, if it's a job, almost, almost. I don't know why I'm on this crappy job. <laughs> because you need to learn people here because where I have you going, I need to work some stuff out of you. You have to be more patient. That's why you're still on this job now because you have not, I'm talking to somebody, you have not learned patience yet. Because the next job I'm going to give you, you're going to make almost twice as much money, but you're going to need twice as much patience. All right. Great. So I'm trying to work this out of you. In stages. Okay, cool. All right. God isn't interested in a speedy manifestation. God isn't interested in just giving it to you immediately. We have to understand what God is interested in. Father, will you do this for me? <sighs> oh, yeah, 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 I'll do it. When? I know you didn't ask, I'm God. I'll do it when I want to. <sighs> He's not interested in speedy manifestation. He's not trying to give it to us quickly. What does God have to prove? What does he have to prove? Amen. We are the ones who want it in a hurry. And if we'll be honest, we want it in a hurry because we don't want to use our faith for a lengthy amount of time. I just want to use my faith right here and now. You just give it to me and I say, we don't like trusting God over weeks, over months, over years. That's why we want God to do it immediately. God's like, so I'm to give this to you quickly because you don't want to have faith in me. I'm having faith in you too long now. No, we would never say that to God. But that's what our actions show. I'm tired of having faith in you. Just go ahead and do it already. Wow, wow, wow. Oh, God. Just like a father. Oh my goodness gracious. If Joshua is in the car with me and he is hungry. I'm like, how's this boy just 
four years old. Daddy, that's Zaxby's right there. <laughs> yeah. You know, usually when I'm with mommy, you know, we go to, we go to Zaxby's. So this little boy don't realize he's trying to play me and that I know he's trying to play me. When we, go, when we go to Papa's house, you know, I have a salad, and I'm just sitting there. And then he just, i like, oh, okay. I just play right along with him. He's sitting right there looking, smiling. And so then he finally, Daddy, I'm hungry. I said, Joshua, where did I tell you we were going? Chick-fil-A. So what's the problem? And don't let us get to Chick-fil-A. Because I like to do curbside, you know, because you pull them to the slot and they bring it out to you. And so I've ordered it and stuff on, on, online so I can get my points. You get free food when you... Come on now, don't start nothing. And so I get my points and stuff. So I don't go through the drive through so he can hear. I've ordered it. So all he knows, we have pulled up to Chick-fil-A and you just sitting here. He is interested in a speedy manifestation. Yeah. He wants it now. Yes. But the father understands things happen in stages. 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 Let me step up and tell you, your food has already been ordered. It has already been ordered. Wow. You know how it is. You go into a restaurant. You sit there. Hey, it's just day. We've been sitting here 20. We placed our order 20 minutes ago. Uh, thank God. I don't want something just thrown in the microwave and then hand it out. Mm -mm, take your time with my food. <laughs> stages. Stages. All right. So then, whatever you desire that others would do to and for you, even so do also to and for them. For this sums up the law and the prophets. In other words, that's the whole Old Testament right there. Whatever you want people to do for you, do for them. Now, let's get to this. So then, literally means, have we made a stage, a level happen for someone else? That we're asking God to make happen for us? Yes. Do this for me, Lord. Have you helped somebody on the stage where they are? Yes. What we want, God, this is what Jesus said. Whatever you desire people do for you. Do also for them. Now, this is important. Please understand this, okay? Please, please, please understand how God operates. By design, God distributes most blessings through human resources. When I ask God for a construction loan, I, I didn't think it was going to fall out of the sky. He used human resources. Which is why, by design, by God's design, what God causes to happen for us depends largely on what we cause to happen for others. That's the way God does it. This is your homework. But before, before I get to the homework, I, I need you to understand that by God design, God's designs, most every blessing comes from somebody else, even if it's healing. Somebody lays hands on you, somebody prays for you, and, and God heals you. Most interactions are human to human. And I call it, uh, I don't know, about 30-something years ago, the Holy Spirit showed me, I call it the blessing triangle. We go to God. God touches somebody's heart to be a blessing to us. That is how God almost 99% of the time operates. But 
what are we doing for somebody else? God just gave me an example, and I was just thinking about it. This is good. If you, hallelujah to God. If you want a new car, go up to somebody and say, here's $20 for gas for your car. Here's $20 for gas for your car. Stay. Why? Because the car I want, see, I have had a four-cylinder all my life. The car that I want is an eight-cylinder. I'm going to use more gas. So I'm going to sow gas seed to you. For Hallelujah. For the car that I want in stages. Amen. Now, if I get this car that I want, I can keep my car dirty like this one I have now. So I go, and, and you know, it was only 80 something dollars, but I, I want to give you this car vacuum yes. for your car. How, what are you trying to say about my car? No, 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 no. I'm just sowing a seed for what I want. I'm just helping you in stages so God will help me in stages because God is only going to do for me what I help to do for others. Yes. So our homework, as you know, I've been giving homework every week. Because Deshaun told me to. Seriously. Be generous. That's on work. Be generous. Why? So you can be a witness of God's generosity. Of God's generosity. God has given us a secret. He has literally given us a secret. Like, wow. This is how you operate. This is how things happen. Has anybody here ever gotten money that floated down from the proverbial and the actual sky? Came through somebody. Amen. Came through somebody's hands, somebody's account. Amen. Okay. Help somebody. I don't have enough for me. What do you have? I ain't got nothing but my mouth. Good, encourage somebody on, the, on that stage. You know, I see what you're trying to do and you're going to make it. I see just what you're trying to do with yourself and you're going to make it. Encourage them during that stage of their life. Some people, that's all they need is courage to go from here to there. And now God will do for you what you Dear for somebody else. So Father, we come before you in Jesus' name and we thank you so much. Thank you, Father, for teaching us today how you operate. Thank you for teaching us about generosity. Thank you, Father, for taking us literally this, this one whole section of scriptures all together leading up to generosity what we are to do starting out by not judging folk because father if we judge them how in the world are we going to encourage them how are we going to help them on their stage on the level of blessing where they are oh father God People are climbing the staircase to their blessing. Climbing the staircase to the door that they will knock on. And it will be open. And they will walk in and receive their blessings. And some people need encouragement to climb. Need help. Need gas money. Need a car vac. They need something that we can do for them. 
Your word even declares, if we are not faithful in that which belongs to another man, who is going to give us our own? That's what your word declares. So Father, thank you for teaching us not to be judging. Because you don't want to judge us. You don't want us to be judged. You don't want us to be condemned. You want to bless us lavishly. Why? Not so that we can just show we got all of this, but we will be able to help somebody else. We'll be able to give somebody $1,000 like it's nothing and tell them don't tell anybody because I didn't do this for to be seen. I just want to help you because I have somewhere else I need to go. Lord, help us to help somebody else. Father, Give us, hallelujah to God. Mm. Father, give us sensitivity to your Holy Spirit that we can help people all day long. Father, we want to be a people of help. Amen. And your Holy Spirit just told me that some of us here now and those listening and watching didn't even know that I literally have the power to help somebody get a blessing they've been praying years to receive, months to receive, days, weeks. Father, we have what people need. We didn't realize it. Everybody doesn't, everybody doesn't need money. Everybody don't need money. Some people just need encouragement. Some people just need a confirmation that, yep, this is what you're supposed to do. Doesn't cost us a penny of our own money, Father. So I ask, again, give us sensitivity to your Holy Spirit. So we will say and do whatever needs to be said, whatever needs to be done to encourage somebody, to give somebody what they need. And Father, we will be generous with our time, with our words, with our actions to help somebody else. We're praying. We're praying into our own stages. We are. We're praying into this stage. We're praying into a next stage. Every time we pray, we're praying into either the stage where we are now or praying to an, a, another level, another stage higher, yes. another stage closer to the finished product, the final product, the manifestation. Lord, you're so awesome. You're so perfect. Thank you for showing us how you operate. And this isn't even tricking you. Like if we do for others, I'm going to do this for others, and, and I know you'll do it for me. It's not tricking. You told us, yeah, this is the way it works. Go ahead and do for others, and I'll do for you. It's no trick. Just do it out of love. Be sincere. Give what you actually have. Really encourage them from your heart. Father, we're going to do it. 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 And I thank you, Father God, for teaching us because now we're more encouraged to pray. Because we thought if we didn't receive the final product, you didn't hear our prayer. But now we know you always answer us in stages. And this helps us so much. So thank you, thank you, thank you. And we're going to live this. Not just this week, for the rest of our lives. And we will complete our homework. And we'll complete our homework every single day. We're going to be generous. We're going to be generous. Thank you, God. Thank you, God. So we can be a witness of your generosity. Through us and to us. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. amen. And amen. Thank you, Lord. 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 Now, if you would just briefly, just bow your heads again with me. Close your eyes with me. And I want to ask, is there somebody here who say, you know, I don't have a relationship with God. I don't know Jesus personally. I'm not going to ask you to stand. I'm not going to ask you to come here. Just right where you are. Do you know God as Father? Do you have a relationship with him? A close relationship? Because that's the only proximity. We learned that a few weeks ago. That's the only proximity God wants with us in a relationship. Close. Close relationship. Do you have a close relationship with God? Do you have a close relationship with Jesus? Do you have a close relationship with the Holy Spirit? 
If not, I'd love, 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 love to pray with you, to just have you repeat after me in prayer. If you say, I want to give my life to God. I did at one point in time, but I left him. I'm not as close. I, I, I want to come all the way back. I want to, I want to do over. I want to start over again. Or either I've never given my life to God. And I think I want to try this. I really think I want to try it. All I want you to do is right where you are, to simply repeat after me. It's coming straight from you because you're the one saying it. And God is looking directly at you as an individual. And he wants you. You don't know how much God really wants you. He really, really does. There's one man who wanted Jesus to heal his son. Jesus said, do you believe? He said, Lord, I believe, but help thou my unbelief. You may be here with unbelief. It's okay. It's okay. Jesus will even help your unbelief. Jesus understands. He understands. It could be difficult to believe that I would do this. It could be very difficult. I'm sure it is difficult. It's not easy. That's why I had to constantly say, have faith, have faith, have faith. Because I know it's difficult. I know it is. But have faith. I'll help your unbelief. If you come to me, I'll help your unbelief. I'm just that kind. I'm just that loving. I'm just that into you. I want you. I want you. And I want us to be close. I want us to be close. So if you're willing to give your life to God, through Jesus Christ, just simply repeat right where you are, those here, those listening and watching, just simply repeat and say, Father, I come before you right now in Jesus' name. I know Jesus died for me and you raised him from the dead. Raise me from the dead, the death of all my sins, and forgive me of all my sins. Thank you, Lord Jesus, for dying for me. Come into my life and live your life through me so I can please the Father, just like you please the Father. Now, Father, thank you for saving me. I belong only to you. And I'll do exactly what you want me to do. Thank you for this relationship. And thank you for how close we will become. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Mm, 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 mm. Somebody meant what they said. Thank you, Father. Mm -mm -mm. Welcome to a new life. Welcome to a brand new life. Jesus Christ. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. We'll be here tomorrow from 12 to 1 for our noonday prayer. And we're really looking forward to what God will do this week. I'm going to tell you, there's some big things happening. There's some big things happening for people. You're just not happening in it yet, but it's happening. Yes. Uh-huh. It's already on your timeline. I'm telling you what the Lord said. It's already on your timeline. Thank you, Lord. You're just not happening in it. It's already happening, but you just haven't gotten to that point in the future where you will be happening with it. But I I promise you, I promise you, because of what God showed me, there's some big things happening for people. I'm telling you, telling you, telling you, telling you. I thank God for what he said last week about new positions and, and what he's done. Like I heard the testimonies this week. I'm telling you, there are some, there, there are some more blessings coming for you. God's people. I'm telling those here, those who are listening, watching our online campus, I'm telling you. I heard somebody say, I receive it. But I'm going to tell you now, it's already in your future. There's some things already in your future that you don't even know about that the Father has for you. You're 
Well, like I just preached, you're just going through stages to get there. That's all it is. That's all it is. God heard you. And it's going to happen. I promise you. God has not. He's, he's not. He, God has finished. It's already done. You just haven't gotten there. Somebody say, God, somebody say, God ain't finished blessing you. Yes, he is. He's finished his work. You just hadn't gotten there yet. That's all it is. That's all it is. You're going through stages and you're going to get there. Amen. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord.